Welcome to the next video on SQL Lite. In this video, I'm going to be talking about SQL Lite triggers. Now, in SQL relational databases, a trigger is basically a piece of code within the database that runs when you when you uh, execute or try to execute a delete, an insert, or an update on another table. I'm going to show you a an example to show how triggers work. So let's get into SQL Lite. Now, I'll go create, actually, uh, yes, I'll go create table, CEOs, uh, name, string, uh, unique, salary, integer, politics, string. Okay, and you can see that CEOs table is there. Now I'm going to just cut and paste some uh, entries into this table so paste Jack Welch he makes a million dollars he don't show this yes Jack Welch makes a million dollars um I'll do the next element uh, Carly Fiorina insert Carly Fiorina makes five million dollars they're both Republican uh, we'll insert another one. Insert into CEOs. Eric Schmidt makes 400000 He's a Democrat. Of course, there is the venerable uh, Lee Iacocca. If you remember from the early 80s, he took a salary of $1. And I'll say he's a Democrat. Um, and then we'll cut one more insert into CEO's values Kim please and she makes 600,000 she's Republican these are just all contrived values now you can do things like you know select star from CEO's and get the results okay um, you know uh, you can do all the SQL stuff there now what I'm gonna do is create another table to record any salary changes that somebody would make. So the way this table is going to work is you got record salary changes. This is just a unique key for it. Um, here is where I'll put the details of the change. This is the time of the change, and this is the change who did the change. The purpose of this table is to is to record who made changes to the table. Now in my example here, the change by field will always be by somebody named Flunky, um, but if you're running this in a program, you can always obviously put in the ID of the logged in user. All right. Now what I'm going to do is, okay, just before I, before I do this, um, let's say you go update CEOs, um, set salary equals three, where name equals Lee I, uh, Coca. Okay, so now you can do an update on the salaries. You can select star from CEOs, and you'll see there's something in there. But if you wanted to record your salary changes, you have to do it by hand, and that's a pain. Now, there's a way to do it automatically. You go create trigger. We'll call the trigger record salary changes update of yeah you can go lowercase as well um, salary okay so this this chain this trigger fires when you update the salary on the CEO's table and what are you gonna do well you begin then you go insert into recorded salary changes okay and remember recorded salary changes that table we created up here right with uh, the change by and time of in the content and uh, this that's different from the record salary changes which is actually a verb where we can record the salary changes that's the name of the trigger okay so rec insert into recorded salary changes content time of and change by values ok 
Okay. I go name and then concatenate with old dot name. Now this is the value of the table, whatever was in the table um, of the field being updated. So that's old name. And then we'll concatenate that with new salary concatenated with um, whoops actually before we do old name we have to do uh, old salary old salary old salary um, concatenated with old dot salary that's the old salary of the up of the salary of the record before it was updated and then we'll concatenate that with new salary and concatenate that with the actual value for new dot salary this is the salary um, of that that's being updated after the change Um, and then we'll also throw in the date time now. That's the SQLite date time functions, which basically gives you the current timestamp. And we'll just say it was done by somebody named Funky. There we go. And then we have to end this trigger. Now, if you go dot schema, you'll notice that in addition to the table CEOs and recorded salary changes, there's also a trigger in the table. Now let's give it a try. So select star from CEOs, oops, from recorded salary changes. There's nothing in this table. Okay, now let's go update CEOs, set salary equals two where name equals Lee I-A-C-O-C-C-A, -C -C Lee Iacocca. All right, now select star from recorded salary changes. Oh, look at that. We have a new record. It says name Lee Iacocca. The old salary was three. The new salary is two. It was done at this time, and it was done by somebody named Flunky. In fact, if we go star from CEOs, do the select. You'll notice that Iacocca's salary is now two instead of uh, somewhere up there, I believe it was three. Uh, I didn't do a select here, but it was. <laughs> and if you don't believe me, um, update salary, set the salary to 22 where the name is Lee Iacocca. You can see that the salary is now 22 right here. And if you check the recorded items, now you have a new new salary of 22. See that old salary was two and new salary is 22. Um, you can also, you go um, update CEOs set salary, actually, um, yeah, equals, one, two, zero, one, two, three, four, uh, where politex equals democrat. Give all the democrats a raise. All right, now you notice there are two democrats, Eric Schmidt and Lee Iacocca. So let's see, their salaries are 422. Okay, so if I go like this and then select star from CEOs, you notice that Schmidt's and Iacocca's salaries have changed. More importantly, you'll notice in the recorded salary changes now, there were two changes done at once. The one for Schmidt, 400,000 new salary, 1.2 million. Same with Iacocca, new salary, 1.2 million. It was done at exactly 1426, 56, and this was also 56 by Flunky. So that one query changed two records, so that caused the trigger to fire twice and insert two records into the table. 
And this is basically how SQL light triggers work. Um, they're really useful when you have a uh, when you have a database where it's not quite normalized and you know you need to update stuff in one place uh, as well as another it's good for this particular application where you did a little audit trail um, and it's also useful if you have views and you want to write to a view what you do is you just pop a trigger on a view and instead of writing to that view you write to some other table so this is where triggers are really useful and that concludes the video